Hi everyone, it's Coach Mo here for Motivational Monday. And we've got a really, really hot topic today because we went into our Facebook groups and asked you to answer the question of what did your parents say about your career? Because I'm gonna tell you something, in all of the 700 plus women we've coached in our kick-ass workshop, a lot of it comes down to the fact that somehow they got sideways with what their parents said to them and it kind of didn't go in the right direction. And so I love your parents because they birthed you and whoever else raised you and whoever else was responsible for the messages that you got growing up and all of that. I love them. I'm sure you love them. And we're no offense to any human being on this planet, but most of the time our parents steer us wrong because they are human. And therefore as lovely human beings, like all of us, we are flawed. And unfortunately, if you have kids yourself, you probably get this. You say things to them that maybe stuck a little bit harder than you meant, or you're coming out of your own fears or your own scarcity or something like that. And goodness gracious, our parents meant the same good for us, but yeah, I'm going to share some stories uh, from some of my clients. We will protect their names to protect the innocent. Um, and also for myself, I love my parents dearly. My dad died about two years ago. He was a great role model, a great father, and a great professional icon for all of us kids and for many people. Um, but you know what? He came with his own biases about what was possible, what life was um, going to deliver to us. And you know what? Um, okay. And my lovely mother, I followed in her footsteps in my career profession as a nurse, and it didn't really pan out for me in the way that it did for her. And I had to make some shifts and pivots that were a little troublesome. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit because what's important is that in this day and age, human beings want to follow their inner desires, their inner urgings and have a deep level of satisfaction about their work. And that's where we are with humanity as it is today. And especially in this time that we're in right now, we see more and more how we want satisfaction and connection with our soul, with our purpose. We want to do purposeful work as an accountant, an engineer, an, uh, an IT professional, a banker, all, all of the professions. We can grab that level of satisfaction, but sometimes the things that we learned growing up have deep roots that still cause us to have a tug and pull. And I'm going to talk about that today and hello to everyone. Let's see if I can say hello to, to all my uh, lovely visitors here who have said hello. Darcy, hello. Elise, great to see you. Paula, nice to see you. Tracy, Lee, Michelle, nice to see you. Alicia, first timer here. <laughs> Alicia, happy to have you here. Uh, Heather, nice to see you. Hey, Rebecca, great to see you. And let's get motivated for Motivational Monday. I don't know. It's a name day of the week that was named after me or was I named after Monday? I don't know. <laughs> if you're new to my work, uh, Mo is short for Maureen. And I was Maureen Fall all my life in the professional education and work sector, but I was always Mo to my family and friends. And as a matter of fact, to my mom, I was always Moe and sort of still to this day, I'm Moe and not my favorite, but Hey, love my mother. And as I said, I stepped into her footprints as a nurse. That was my college preference because after exploring all of the healthcare professions and choices I had as a high school girl, I loved science. I loved math. But I'm going to tell you, there were kids in my high school who were at another level of just smarts, easier smarts um, than me. I was a clarinet and bassoon player. Shout out to the woodwind section. I was a basketball and volleyball player. And as a matter of fact, my mom was such an advocate for my athleticism. She actually convinced the track coach. We only had boys track when I was in high school. She convinced the track coach to allow me to run in the 
athletic championships for Western Pennsylvania. I went to high school in Western Pennsylvania. And so I ran championship level track in high school because of my mother. Shout out to mom. Um, I didn't really have a strong pull toward a profession that was calling my name as a young high schooler. So because I liked science and I knew medical school was probably not my jam, I went into nursing. And I'm at that age still where that was kind of like top five professions for girls. Um, I hung out with a lot of my friends who went to pre-law, pre-medicine, uh, some engineering. But to me, nursing, teaching, uh, things like that were what you chose. Truthfully, if I was a kid now, I'd choose sports management because I love, love, love sports. And I would love to have a lot of fun doing that. Uh, no regrets. Uh, I'm happy I chose nursing. I was a great nurse. Uh, but the problem was that as a nurse, once you know the medicines and the machines, that just didn't seem to have enough in there for me. So I left the cardiac unit at University of Pittsburgh Hospital to pursue cardiac rehab, to teach patients how to recover from heart attacks, open heart surgery, and heart disease stress management, which today we call meditation. We weren't allowed to call it meditation back then. Uh, proper exercising, proper eating. I was always a pretty healthy, health nut type of gal. And as a young nurse, I really was excited about helping cardiac patients recover. Why am I telling you this? Because when I told my mom I was leaving the hospital nursing level for cardiac rehab, I think she was upset at me. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Don't you like nursing? Um, so, uh, Gloria saxophone, rock on flute and piccolo, Alicia, wow. <laughs> Got a bunch of musicians here. Um, so when I left traditional nursing, I was sort of a bummer to my mom because I was no longer in a category that she could easily explain and that she felt was connected to her. So sometimes when our parents talk to us about our careers and what's possible, they project themselves onto us and it's what human beings do. If you are a parent, you know exactly what that's all about. So anyway, we went out to the Facebook groups and asked you, asked you what your parents said. And most highly responded was that your parents said you should become a fill in the blank despite having, having no interest in it. That was our highest answer of the survey. And so I'm curious to all of you who may have uh, picked that as your survey answer, did you become a fill in the blank? And is that like part of your career problem now? Or have you made the pivot? Or tell me a little bit about that in the chat. 25 uh, respondents told us they didn't get any advice from their parents. Yikes. Um, and then there was, my parents told me I had to have something I could fall back on. What does that mean, fall back on? I hear it all the time too. Well, you want to make sure you have something that you could make a money no matter no matter what. Uh, some said settle for a career path and don't job hop. Oh, job hopping. Mm. I had, I think I counted 13 jobs in my career and I was criticized for job hopping also. I didn't job hop. I advanced my career. That's what it was called. Um, so here's the thing. Our parents are well-intentioned and they tell us to go into this, go into that. They're trying to be practical for us. And yet at the same time, I've also coached a lot of women who have gone into impractical uh, professions. Um, what are the impractical ones? I don't know, the ones that sound like art history, English, music, et cetera. The higher uh, evolved <laughs> areas of study that have less to do with the economy perhaps, but more to do with what we bring to the table. And those are somewhat tricky challenges sometimes to make, although there's Plenty of people who have that type of education and soar in certain companies that grab a hold of liberal arts educations. I went to a liberal arts Catholic college, so I was uh, schooled in a variety of different endeavors along with nursing. And I um, now I'm a fill in the blank and I'm redirecting <laughs> 20 years later. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mary says, my mother was disappointed when I left Johns Hopkins for a less stressful, better paying job. I'm a nurse. She liked being able to say I worked at Hopkins. I know, you know, when I, um, when I retired after my 30 plus year career, um, I think my parents were upset because I had a really fancy job title and everything and they could like brag about me. 
uh, to their friends, people at church, et cetera. And then when I left to pursue this coaching thing, well, you don't tell your friends that your daughter's a, a coach. What does that mean? She doesn't work in the NFL. What's going on with that? What do I tell my friends? I don't know. Is that my problem? <laughs> I was never fill in the blank, but was always told I wasn't good enough, which of course has affected me in my older years. Yeah. So that's a big one. You're never going to amount to fill in that blank. You're never going to get along in da 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 da. And one of the top responses was basically marry well. Ugh. I know. I know. I'm a huge believer in you've got your life to live no matter who you're married to and that your desires and your plans and what feeds your soul, which ultimately is the contribution you give into the world. And when you get money back for that, it feels really great when it's hitting you in the soul. So one of the big myths that our parents give us is that it has to be some practical thing or something that they know uh, either works well or that they just know how to do because that's their comfort zone. So truthfully, if you look at um, Paula basketball and clarinet, <laughs> soul sisters, um, if you look at the things that we are told and you look at the subconscious tugs that have been pulling on us, they probably match up. And here's what ends up happening. We doubt ourselves when we're going against our tribe or our parents' expectations because they knew better, didn't they? They always knew better. They always knew right. And even if it's 50 years later, we still feel that they had some deeper knowledge. And why is because it is wired into our nervous system that they had a better idea of what was going to work out for us in our life. Even if the evidence isn't even pointing in that direction. Ah, I know. <laughs> See, the thing is about our parents' expectations about our careers is they don't make any sense at all. And yet there's still this tug and pull in the direction that is not going to help us and hasn't been helping us for decades, decades. And some of you, your parents may still not be alive and the tug is still going on. So I remember my dad's last couple of years of life when he would um, again, ask me what I did and explain it to him. He would say, people really pay you for that? Yes, dad, they do. Um, so my father made a major career pivot when he was 53. He left as an executive of the trucking industry and went to law school. And he pursued law school, uh, went to law school, was a student in his 50s, um, as opposed to all the other students who were in their early 20s. And um, he eventually graduated from law school, passed the bar, practiced law in the state of New York, and later became an elected judge. And so you could easily say that he had two very successful, very distinctly different careers. And yet when I retired my big healthcare executive career at almost the same age, he doubted me and wondered what I was doing. So it's funny, even if they, as our parents follow a particular path and do something, they get scared when we do something that is tricky or a little risky or not as predictable even though as an executive, there's nothing predictable about being an executive at any given time. Someone could decide that they don't want you in that company and you're out the door. So, um, uh, <laughs> Christina, that's interesting. So, um, this is all great stuff. Uh, mom was divorcing. My husband thought it, <laughs> she was concerned about what my future would be if I were alone. Right. And then there's that, <laughs> Oh, so our dear parents, all of their wishes and dreams and desires for us are deeply ingrained in our nervous system, in our neuro pathways of who we are and what we're all about, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you were told to be in a certain position, a certain career, take a certain college uh, track, 
even though it wasn't good for you, there's probably some feelings around that. There's probably some feelings like your decisions aren't really that good and other people's decisions are better. Check that out. If you um, followed something that was maybe against your parents or if your parents stopped you from doing something that you wanted to do, there's probably some self doubt deep in there. It may not be that deep. It may be right there and it may have been or might still be a cause of some career frustration or difficulties for you. And not showing up as your full, beautiful, awesome self is always colored with the messages we got from those who raised us. It's always a challenge to come through that. And you know what? It's what we see all the time. It's what we see all the time when, um, oh, Rochelle, nice to see you. That's cool. Um, it's, it's always, always um, a, a, a challenge when we are, as Heather is redirecting and we are redefining and we are going against either our grain or their grain and we are creating something. Um, <laughs> Heather, that's funny. Yes. So how is that working out for you? Yes. Heather is a, an extremely uh, confident woman on her path now. And uh, it's always nice to see you here, Heather. Um, so here's what happens. So, um, and a shout out to Alicia, one of our, uh, new tribe members. So here's what happens when you are going against the grain of your tribe, you are like a single rower rowing in a, in a direction and everyone else is rowing in the other direction. And maybe you've had this with some other aspects of your life or career. Getting divorced can sometimes be that type of thing. Anytime you're breaking from the normal or breaking from the usual of how you were raised, parented, expectations of your tribe. And I know I work with a lot of women who were expected to be quiet, meek, not to speak up, not to be shown as too smart, all sorts of other aspects. So some of the things that your parents told you about your career is embedded in how they told you to be a woman or a young girl. And oftentimes our career gets hung up on those things too. Never good enough, never can speak up enough, perfectionism tendencies, all sorts of booby traps that were laid out in front of us because still in the day and age where we were raised, being a successful career woman was still a relatively new topic. And if you want to talk about human nature and what we know as humans, all we have to do is look at our, our beautiful example of Albert Einstein. And I love this example because it just shows you how slow we humans are to change based on historical embedded truths that we all believe we can't possibly think differently for a while. So Albert Einstein in 1905 wrote his first Nobel prize, eventually it won a Nobel prize winning paper that yes, I've read the book that says that maybe his wife helped with all the math on it. Either way. Um, he told us that we live in an energetic universe. He told us that everything is connected and that we can speed things up and slow things down, but we just can't perceive it that way. E equals MC squared is that energy is moved by the speed of mass. And so in an energetic world where we live, our existence is basically all connected. And as Albert Einstein lived out his scientific life in the, in the field of physics, he kept explaining to us how we're all connected. He called it this thing called ether that connects us all. And it's basically a field of wave energy that we're connected to. It's what cell cell uh, uh, signals travel on. It's what Wi-Fi travels on. It, it's, it's, it's in an energetic fluid that we can't see and perceive because we live in it. And that connecting allows us to be able to live more differently than our parents did. But over 115 years later, we're still not grabbing our head around 
this concept because we can't think about it. We can't, it's beyond our thinking. So what we are, we are typically limited to are the things that anchor us and our parental thoughts and ideas about who we are, what we should do for a living, anchor us. And our reality is mostly based on those anchors. You know, like you probably have some thoughts about whether you're lucky or not. You probably have some thoughts about whether you're a good speaker, or maybe you have some thoughts about whether you're athletic or not, or clumsy or not, or things like that. Those are anchors and that we have certainty around it and they become our commitments. So if you've lost your job a couple of times, you might have an anchor that says, I'm never going to find a job where they're going to appreciate me. If, if you have a parent that told you that you're not good in math or that you're not good in something else, you have probably have an anchor around that. It may or may not be true. It's probably not true, but because you have an anchor around it, you kept believing that. And then you put evidence toward that in order to make it true because it's much easier and much more of a likely human condition for us to make sure that our parents are right. Even those of you with rebel streaks, deep down, you want your parents to be right. It's a tribal primitive instinct that we want our tribal origins to be true and right and certain and predictable. And we want to belong to that tribe. So it's very difficult for us to break from it. So we live in this quantum field where there's infinite possibilities for us, but yet we're anchored to all of these other truths that come through uh, in, our, in our familial areas. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. So uh, hello to Lisa Bowl and hi, how are you doing today? So uh, we got to keep our oars going together. <laughs> Is that oars or oars? Uh, Rochelle, nice to see you. My dad went to college later in life too. He was a high school dropout. So it was a really big event. That's really awesome. Really great to see uh, all of the examples we can about how we can continue to succeed and define who we are and how we are unique in this world. So it's really important to understand where some of your personal hangups, your personal anchors, limitations reside so that you can eventually do something about it. You have choices to make in life and your choices pretty much can be all around what your soul is desiring and what it's speaking to you. And most of the women that we talk to on our clarity calls, here's the link to book one, a clarity call for you. Most of the women we talk to on the clarity calls have a, a desire to do something more or different, but it might be a little bit fuzzy. And the reason why it tends to be fuzzy is because we typically have conflict about what we're feeling and what we were told, what we're feeling versus what we were told, what we're feeling versus what we have been doing. And so that feeling of wanting something more, that feeling of not really being satisfied with our contributions up until this point can really feel that it's in conflict with what our parents told us about life and about what's possible for us including our earning power. Most of our earning power correlates with what our parents earned and how they earned it. So a lot of the women we work with also have a parental disconnect with the fact that they're out earning their parents, perhaps out educating out more educated than their parents. And this starts to create a conflict as well. See it all the time. Matter of fact, it's probably in the top 10 of the things we see about how women's careers get hung up. I've got all this education. I don't know what to do with it because from a parental perspective, perhaps there wasn't good role modeling or someone to help show you the way. And maybe you've relied on bosses or other mentors that just didn't have your best interests at heart because frankly, most people are just trying to get their careers and their jobs going in the right direction. So if you have shifted direction relative to your parents' expectations, that anchor is causing some conflict with you. If you have gotten yourself to a level of performance, educational or compensation wise, that's different or better than your parents. There's probably some conflict in you about breaking from the tribe. Um, oftentimes, uh, oftentimes, 
there's a an additional tribal tug when our ladies start to be happy and joyous from inside. And if you're used to not 100% being happy or being kind of down on yourself or playing small or any of those, you know, fatal issues that that creep into our career that cause us not to perform at the right level that we're made for, those things can now when they start to get healed and corrected can also be the thing against the family tribe. We're used to you being the complainer. We're used to you being kind of down in the outs. We're used to you kind of being the way that you've always been. <laughs> okay. So when you start being different to your home tribe, you may be like swimming against the current. And that's where uh, a great support system, great coaching and experts who have been there before can really provide uh, strategies around that and also ways to maneuver that. So it isn't a takeout punch because once you start performing above and beyond what some of the expectations are that have been set for you, you begin to break this sacred bond that we have with our, with our family unit, you know, sort of like, how dare you be happy and successful or how dare you actually get that accounting career going when we thought you should have been a lawyer or whatever the case may be. Um, your level of success and happiness might be different than your family of origin. And in so many ways, um, in so many ways, that's true. Um, Mary, you're saying I've changed my hair. See how we're breaking from the tribe. Hmm. Looks like I'm sort of the same as the picture below, but okay. Uh, <laughs> so Anne Marie, everyone in my family has a PhD and I'm always reminded of that in subtle ways. Wait, wait, wait. Or not so subtle ways. Um, okay. That there's Heather again. Um, so, so here's the thing we have to understand where our parents' expectations are coming from, not try to understand them, but just understand how that has impacted us. We have to understand and appreciate, are we gonna let that still impact us? We have to also understand for ourselves, is that holding us back in our performance level? Is it holding us back in our income level? Is it holding us back in both? Are we feeling that we can't really be as powerful as we want to be because of the stories we were told and the expectations that we were given always to be the good girl, always to be following the rules, always to be following the right things to do based on whom uh, perhaps this has shown up in some of your career choices or bosses or in work environments. If you take a really close look at the work environment and at your parental relationships, you might find some patterns there as well. And the good news is it's all fixable. It's all able to be moved into your favor and into your power, but you have to do some significant things to overcome that. And it's your time to do that. I'm going to give you a big guarantee. The world has massively shifted and I'm going to guarantee you this, that if you are not on your soul's path, if you have not shined up your power where this global pandemic is shifting the roots of humanity, you are going to have to go beyond the good thinking and the anchors that have been holding you back those anchors will be quaking a little bit. So it's kind of like a humanity earthquake that we're undergoing right now. And the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic of what our parents have told us and, and why it can be such a, a conflict for us is because all of those things that created our standard reality are all being put into question right now. And when we continue to expand as a human race, as human beings on this planet, we're going to continue to be pulled forward into our soul's energy, into that infinite sense of self, into our true purpose. It's going to be calling us forward even greater. And that doesn't mean that you need to start 
having a quilt shop or a cupcake shop, even though I'm sure those are great business opportunities, but you can, you can be purposeful. You can be living your truth as a tech professional, as an engineer, as a salesperson, as a program manager, as a project manager, as a financial manager, as a director, as a VP, as a chief operating officer. When I was chief operating officer, I was living my greatest truth because I was getting stuff done at a high level while I was working with my team and helping them be better at what they were doing. I love, 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 love growing people. And now it's what I do for a living. But when I was an executive, my last six to eight years of my career, that was the thing that helped me get better at what I was doing is learning the truth of my power. I had shut it off for most of my career because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the conflict that I was living with of not being good enough, of not being heard in meetings, of not being uh, acknowledged and promoted. I felt like I had to go somewhere else to get that. And each time I did the same darn thing repeated itself. And it was sort of okay because I moved up in my career with each job opportunity. I made sure I advanced in title and in money so that my career was on an upward trajectory but I brought the parental anchors. I'm a middle child. So that was the other thing that was part of my journey was coming through that. We don't need to psychoanalyze me at this point. You'll learn uh, plenty about me in the coaching workshop. If you choose to work with me and my team, we all have parental and family of origin anchors that hold us prisoner until we decide that our soul's purpose and power is worth more than that. And I'm not telling that you have to do that, but if you truly want freedom in this life, that is what you're going to have to choose your soul's purpose and power over the family origin stories. And I truly believe that that is our purpose. It is our purpose to evolve. So many of the women who've been in my workshop have said that they feel like they've come through generations of the same problem, finally getting solved, where they're able to support their sons and daughters in ways that they have never been able to before. Now that they understand their soul's journey, they're able to be better parents and love their kids for who they are. One of our clients, uh, Nadia, and she talked about this on the interview that she did. I'm, we should probably air that interview again soon. Um, she talked about how as a mom, her, her um, oldest son chose to go into the Coast Guard, I think it is, uh, one of the military branches, uh, rather than going right into college. And at first, the parental, you have to go to college, came out. And then she realized that he had put so much time and effort <clears throat> through his high school career to be going in this direction. It's truly what he felt called to do and to be, and that he can get an absolutely wonderful education going in that route. And she was able to be the mother she wanted to be for him instead of being the judging, but I want this for you, mom. And, um, I don't know if you're here, Nadia, but, um, that story always tugs at my heart, my heart, <coughs> excuse me. because it's a, it's a clear way of how, when we find our soul's true purpose and power, we're able to live in a way that is true for all of those people who we love, rather than putting our shoulds on others, which unfortunately most of us got from our parents. Love them very much. It was that time and that style of parenting. So when you come into your soul's purpose and your soul's power, Yes, your soul's power. You're able to be a more compassionate, powerful, loving parent, spouse, sister, daughter, friend, coworker, boss, leader. Everything gets better when you bring your soul alive. And there oftentimes are conflicts with your family of origin when you do. And that is part of your journey. Indeed. <laughs> okay. So I will definitely help her, Judith. I'm trying to go back to where we are. 
Rebecca, dive back into the those modules. Hey, Gloria, great to see it. Sometimes it feels like Groundhog Day over and over again. I know, Gloria, and we're going to actually get at that um, for for sure. And Alicia, yes, you're you're totally getting uh, the same reverb and the awareness of what I felt in my career for the beginning 20 years or so. How do you know if you need a reset or another new beginning during this time, the energy is tense all around us. So I would suggest um, that you find your own quiet time and reflection to really get into your soul's energy and not in your head because your head cannot outthink what's really going on. You know, your brain is great and it got you through school and it gets you places and you can, I don't know, drive a car and operate a computer with it. But really your true position, your soul's directional position has to come through getting in touch with your divine self, which is through meditation. And it is through quietness and opening yourself to your truth, your greatness, your appreciation, your power is the thing that will guide and direct you. And if you don't have access to your inner power, you might want to book a clarity call and see if we can help you with that, because that is the truth GPS inside of you. I talk about this in my webinar. If you've seen that, um, it's the first shift that you have to make, you have to truly get in touch with your inner being and use that direction, that power, to propel you forward. You cannot think this. There is no spreadsheet. There is no pro con list. If you do that, you will get stuck in the same patterns. Thinking drives you in a stuck pattern for sure. That's a guarantee. If you overthink or overanalyze what's the right path for you, if you do it intellectually, you will be stuck in an intellectual conundrum and you'll never have the answer. You have got to get into your soul. That's why we have such great breakthroughs and such great movement with our ladies in our workshop, because that's where we help them find their truth, their direction and their power. Better interviews, better resumes. I mean, better people come forward when you find your soul. That's the way it works. That's the way that our us human beings are built. And if you stay in your head, you're going to stay anchored to all the programs that you received from not only your, your family of origin and your tribe of origin, but also all the teachers, the boyfriends or other friends who told you things about yourself that you're still subconsciously believing are true. And usually it's negative. Why? because the human brain has a negative bias and we are captivated by negativity because our amygdala, I'm getting into some brain science here, which is the inner part of our primitive brain. It wants to be antenna up. Am I going to get killed? Am I in danger? So we have a negative bias of information coming toward us because it's our protective mechanism. So you're anchored in a lot of negative biases. That's some of the challenges of being human. And if you let those negative anchors win the day, you will not find happiness and freedom. You will definitely not find your soul's power and truth because your soul's power and truth is freedom, love, joy, clarity, appreciation. That's why I want you to live the rest of your days. And we definitely have a formula for that. So today's big takeaways are this. Understand where your family of origin and your parents may have steered you and what messages may still be directing your decision-making, your truth, and perhaps the drain of power from you. There's conflicts perhaps in what you were told about who you are supposed to be and who you are with what you feel might be different or more true. And solving those conflicts is one of the major keys to freedom. And we do that a lot of times in helping you unleash your soul, because once your soul is unleashed, now you can see the truth of who you truly are. So that's the big takeaway for today. Understand and appreciate where you may be held back and what the anchors are. 
and know that there are answers and ways to navigate into your power and truth. And we can certainly help you with those. For those of you who are clients, you can dive right back into those beautiful modules and get the work. If you're currently in the workshop, dive into our coaching, dive into all of the things we had to support you and, and show you the way to your truth and your power. We will help you get there. If you're not a client, the best way to do that is to book a clarity call so we can sort it out and see where you're at, what's going on. What are some of the trends and patterns that keep maybe showing up in your career and why that might be. And if you're desirous of fixing it and you're ready to work with experts instead of wing winging it and hoping that your plan works, uh, we'd be delighted to talk to you about what that looks like. Your parents meant well and your parents meant to protect you from harm and danger. And unfortunately that might look like some booby traps for you actually losing your power and your truth. So take a good look at that this week. And uh, if you want to keep following how I've got going on or what I've got going on um, again, every week so far, uh, we're going to do a, a Q and a as well on Wednesday in my bring your soul to work Facebook group. So if you're not a member there, uh, pop over for that. If you um, want to listen to my radio show on unityradio.org Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, um, last week and it's available as a podcast. I think we posted it in the Facebook group. I talked about the repeating boss pattern and it's very similar to this topic. I would strongly encourage you to go get that uh, radio show archive. It's it plays as a podcast and listen into to what I have to say about the repeating boss pattern and know that all of this is able to be fixed, but not unless you do this. Oh, yeah, that's what's going on. You have to recognize and understand where you're at in order to fix it. Just like anything else in life. If you don't say, oh yeah, that's my problem. Like you'll never fix it. So identifying what's going on and knowing what some of the pitfalls are that are perhaps stealing your happiness every day. We can help you fix many of them. So check out all of those resources available to you. And then each Saturday, 10 AM, there's another uh, daily Mo airing on my Facebook group as well. I'm here to help inspire and direct you. If you want life changing, if you want career changing, if you want to up level who you are and what you're doing for a living, that's what we do in our 12 week kick-ass intensive transformational, wonderful workshop. We'll see you next Motivational Monday. This is your coach, Coach Mo. Please don't forget to bring your soul to work. And I'm talking about the best version. We'll see you next time. Thanks everyone for being here.